Okay, welcome back. This is part 30 of my How to Build a Community Site tutorial series. Uh, in the last video, part 29, what we did is we actually uh, made it so our information would update in our database. Um, so, yeah. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to make it so we can actually update the avatar. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, right before our echo and after all of our, uh, our queries, what we want to do is we want to check for name. So we're going to say if name. So if dollar sign name. So pretty much what we're saying is if an avatar image has been selected or if an image has been selected, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to move the image and we're going to upload the image to our directory, and then we are going to um, uh, update our database. Uh, so so yeah. Um, so for if name. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, move underscore uploaded underscore file. So we're going to move uploaded file um, and uh, and um, the uh, the parameter, there we go, the parameter that the uh, first parameter that we put in here is the uh, TMP name. So TMP name. And if we scroll up, we have that right there. Um, and we, we're getting that with the files information. So TMP name, and the next uh, parameter is uh, the directory or wh wh where we're going to put the file, and as well as the file name itself. Um, so I'm putting all of mine inside of avatars, and then I'm renaming them to the username and then the uh, extension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that part right there. I'm going to hit control X and I'm going to say um, avatar name equals and I'm going to put that inside of here. So right there. So I'm making it the username, the, uh, the user's username and then the extension. So it could be JPG or a JPEG, uh, a GIF or a PNG. Um, so we're going to move that file. We need to put in uh, avatar name right there, make sure it's spelled right, and after we've done that we can run our query to update our database and actually set that. So we want to set the avatar and we want to set that to our avatar name, just like that. Okay, so that pretty much just updates the basic information, uh, but maybe for this you want to make it so uh, the user has to put in their password so, you, so say if, if they left their account logged in or something and someone accesses their account because it's still logged in and they didn't log out, um, they'll just be able to like go in and change all their information and everything and mess them up. Uh, so what you may want to do is uh, check for a password and check for their password. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy one of these and I'm going to put it right above our uh, save button and right below our bio. And I'm going to say... Uh, current password, and I'm going to change the type to password, the name to password, the class to that, and we're going to get rid of the value. So right there, that will give us a, a password box. So now what we want to do is in our first, uh, we want to uh, get the password itself. So, so we want to get password and password. Uh, We'll keep the strip tags for now. Like I said, we're going to create a function to uh, make it more secure, but we'll do that in the this video or the next, um, probably the next or the other. Um, so we want to get the password now. Um, so um, after our we check to make sure we have a valid email, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to make sure that we have the right password. So we're going to password say password equals md5 and our password. So we are going to encrypt our password. Uh, now we're going to make a query and we're going to say mysql uh, query and we're going to say select all from or we can just say select password. Select password from users where 
uh, ID equals and then our user ID. So just like that. And then we want to use numrows. Um, so right there we want to say numrows equals mysql underscore num underscore rows. And inside of here we put our query and we want to say ooh, we want to say if num rows equals equals one. So if the pretty much if the username is correct or the uh, password is correct, uh, then we want to put in our brackets. But we want to put our bracket right after our echo for your information has been saved. And I'm going to go ahead and indent all of that. And then after that, I'm going to put in an else and echo. Um, your password was incorrect and then the info form so uh, that that oh, there we go um, so that will make it so the user has to actually type in their password to be able to um, update their information um, <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is I am going to open the top file or the top.php, so it's inside the styles folder, and top, here we go. So inside of our top file, and right after our JavaScript, I suppose you could put this anywhere, um, but I'm going to put it right after the JavaScript file. Uh, we're going to put it in PHP tags, and we're going to say require, and what we're going to do is we're going to require a script, so inside of our scripts folder, and I'm going to call it uh, functions functions.php. So that functions.php file is going to be uh, a, PH, a PHP file that's going to contain just a bunch of functions in it. So it's inside of the scripts folder and it's called functions, if I can spell it correctly, functions.php and go ahead and save it. So we have our PHP file created. We need to put it in our PHP tags and for our, the first function we're going to put in, and uh, we're going to update our register file and our edit profile. Uh, so we want to say function. You can see we get a nice little syntax highlighting there for function. And then we want to set the, the the next the next thing we would type in is the name of the function. In this case, I'm just going to say um, I'm just going to call it fix text. So yeah. So inside of fix text, what you do is you put in uh, the variable name and because functions uh, return values what we want to do is we want to pass a value to it in this case uh, for this function we're going to be passing uh, the, the text we want to fix and uh, fix text kind of self-explanatory there uh, and I'm just going to call it text and then we want to put in our brackets and then the last thing we want to say is whoops return and we're going to create another variable somewhere in here and we're going to call it um, fin, uh, finished text. So we're going to return the finished text. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to say, um, let's go ahead and copy that. So finished text equals uh, text. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to strip tags. So strip underscore tags. So we're stripping the tags from our finished text. Uh, what we also want to do is we want to strip slashes, so that's that's something else. Uh, and if you want, you can go ahead and uh, just do a Google search for uh, strip tags, strip slashes in PHP or whatever, and you'll find all the information you want about it. Um, now, another thing we want to do is how how we're making this. Um, we want to remove any uh, quotation marks, single quotation or double quotation marks, because that could lead to uh, problems inside of our, our scripts themselves, inside of the various uh, things we've coded. Um, so, like, say, if in a query we're passing along a variable that has a double quotation mark inside of it, um, it's going to mess up the query and we're going to get uh, PHP errors on the page. And that's definitely not what we want because with PHP errors on the page, um, people can do uh, MySQL injection and pretty much get all of your database information. Um, so it's a, it's a really, really big security problem. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, and I don't have enough time to do it in this video. So I'm going to stop this video here. In the next video, we will uh, complete our fix text function. 
and then we will implement it into all of our pages that are uh, that need it. So check out the next part of the series.